morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to the Reach Wesleyan Church this morning. Whether you're here in person or online, we're glad to have you. If you're online, leave a comment down below in the section there, and, and uh, we like to read your comments and see that you're there and actually not just letting the phone sit someplace else. A um, couple of announcements this morning as we begin. Uh, tonight is our annual local church conference, and so we'll be doing some business tonight that any members should plan on being here. Any non-members, you're invited to come and see what's going on and have some input. And we'll be doing some elections, and we'll be having some reports, and afterwards we'll be having some ice cream. Now, my wife had a dream this week. <laughs> she had a dream that we had a church dinner and nobody brought any food. And so I'm hoping it's not prophetic in talking about tonight. So everybody needs to bring some ice cream, or else... <laughs> We're, she's going to make brownies, I know that. And so we'll have brownies, but we won't have ice cream. So, so tonight, it's bring your own ice cream. You know, a good Wesleyan thing, right? Bring your own ice cream, just B-Y-O-I-C. What? I thought we were looking at the share too. Well, yeah, you can bring it to share too. I mean, but, but let's make sure we have some ice cream, not just toppings and brownies. Although, that doesn't sound bad either. I mean... A little chocolate covered brownie with you know some sprinkles on it. It'll be all right. Um, but yes. So just wanted to make sure I really made that clear that if we have ice cream tonight, it's because everybody brings some. Okay. Um, but yes, five o'clock tonight we'll have our local church conference, and then afterwards we'll have our our ice cream. Pastor Ed. Yes. So I come in the door at five o'clock with my ice cream. You can put it right downstairs in the freezer. Okay. Yep. Now, 6 o'clock is going to be quite something. <laughs> right. Yeah, we'll put it in the freezer until we're ready for it. Okay. Yeah. Um, youth group, Friday night. If the weather's nice, we'll be outside, so you might want to bring a, a hoodie or a sweatshirt or something. Uh, but 6 o'clock Friday, we'll plan on having youth. Um, I think that's... Don't forget, what? Oh, what, the, what day did we decide on that? Okay. Don't forget, we have Sunday school at 9.30 on Sunday mornings on Zoom, and you can join us there. There are also books in the back for the adult Sunday school that if you want to take them and just look along, uh, either with Zoom or by yourself, you can do either one. Uh, if you have offerings or gifts you want to mail in, you can mail them to PO Box 2 Jonesport, and we'll get that. Um, and William's trying to find out what day we decided. We're going to try to have a men's fellowship here in the next few weeks. And so, guys, listen up here. I don't think we did decide, did we? What do you want? Pastor Andy. I don't know. Visitation Saturday. Yes, I'm, I'm getting there. Sorry. Yeah, no, I'm getting there. Um, Okay, so men's fellowship. The guys that are here right now, let's do a quick poll. Would you rather meet on a Thursday night or a Monday night? If you want to meet on a Thursday night, just raise your hand. Okay, and a Monday night? Okay, raise your hand if you just don't care. <laughs> I think it was more for Thursday. Okay, so June 3rd, we're going to have men's fellowship. Six o'clock? Okay. Six o'clock, and we're going to do an outside campfire. So if you want to bring something to toast over the campfire, you can do that. Um, otherwise, we'll have some hot dogs and some more stuff here, and you can come, maybe bring a camp chair if you want something that the teens haven't broken already. I'm not. I'm not. I'm just, you're, you're the only teen I can see. The other one's hiding. Yeah. We're going to be, William says we'll discuss going forward what we're going to do for men's fellowship and see if we want to make any changes or anything. So, I think that's it for those announcements. Um, yes, this weekend will be Lauren's celebration of, of life. Um, we're going to have visitation at 4 to 8 on Saturday, correct Doris? Yeah. Okay. So 4 to 8 visitation will be right here at the church. And uh, you can come and spend a little bit of time or a lot of time, whatever you want to do. 
Um, but come and pay your respects. And Sunday, is it 2 o'clock? Yeah. Okay. I need to remember that because I kind of need to be there. Um, but 2 o'clock, we'll be down at Greenwood Cemetery for a graveside service. And everyone's in, welcome to come. And uh, we will have that time together to, to celebrate and remember and, and uh, be with the family. And so we encourage you to, to participate either Saturday night, 4 to 8, or Sunday, 2 o'clock, or both. Um, I think that's it. I don't have anything else. So as we come to worship this morning, we've got a beautiful weekend. It's starting to feel a little more like summer. The campground's open. I know some people are excited about that. The announcements we've heard this week are things are loosening up across the state. And I know people are excited about that. But really, when you think about everything, it comes down to this. All this stuff is just little things, earthly things, temporary things. And so we need to make sure that we bring ourselves back every once in a while to God. Because he is the only thing that is eternal and really matters. And so as we come to worship this morning, reading from Psalm 66, come and see what God has done. His awesome deeds for mankind. He turned the sea into dry land and they passed through the water on foot. Come, let us rejoice in him. He rules forever by his power. His eyes Watch the nations. Let not the rebellious rise up against him. But I love that first part. Come and see what God has done. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Our, we're starting a new sermon series. And um, there's a little chair sitting here on the pulpit. Anybody notice that? Yes. <laughs> we'll get to that later. But we want to... We want to issue that invitation to come and see. And that's for everybody. So come and see. We're going to start with what a mighty God we serve and, and then go into our Lord God as we begin our worship time in song. What a mighty God we serve. Let's pray. 
Father, we are so glad that we serve a mighty God. A God that is not powerless, a God that is not non-existent, a God that is there and loves us and cares for us and, and does things for us, but mostly just is there, that we can know, and we can, we can learn about, and we can serve. And Father, we understand that there are many that don't understand what we feel. But Father, we want to, to impress upon us again how important it is that we invite people to come to you, to come and see what you have done, to come and know you. And so Father, this morning, just stir in us again a desire and a love for you and a, a, a compassion for those around us. In your precious, holy, powerful name we pray. Our hymn this morning is Search Me, O God, and Know My Heart Today. That, that idea of we need to reflect and we need to think and we need God to point out in us those things that may not measure up with what he wants us to be. So let's, let's do this thoughtfully this morning as we worship. Thank you. 
Send a revival, Lord. Start the work in me. It's got to start with us, doesn't it? And there are certainly many that we can think of that need prayer today. Um, but we also need to remember to pray for ourselves. Pray for each other. Uh, because God is always working in us. And there's always things that we're facing as well. Um, I would remind you to pray for those that have, uh, have lost loved ones. Uh, we had service yesterday at the graveside for um, Maxwell Peabody. And so pray for Betty and her family. Uh, continue to pray for um, Melanie and Daniel and Doris and the family as we come to this week. It's going to be, I'm sure, a difficult week, but it's going to be... It's going to be up and down. There's going to be joyful celebrations, but there's also going to be the heartache of loss, too. And uh, so just pray for them. Um, uh, Marina Tyler, many of you know, passed away, and her service was yesterday. So pray for Harold and the family. Um, keep praying for Danny Davis and his family. Um, also, Danny had a fall this week. I haven't heard how he's doing, but I know he was taken in the ambulance, and um, so just pray for him, and I, I think he, if I, if I heard right through the grapevines, I wasn't on that call, so I'm not, I shouldn't be out of bounds here, um, but I think he got knocked over by the dog or something, so, um, so just pray for Danny, um, uh, the Woodard family as well, Sandy's nephew that passed away, uh, pray for them, we've seen an awful lot of it. And I know that some of you have already talked about this this morning, but we keep hearing other bad news. Uh, many of you know Kenton Feeney, mm -hmm. and he just got word this week that he's got cancer and uh, pretty advanced. And so uh, I'll be praying for him, his family. Um, yeah, I don't even know what to say. Um, <laughs> it just seems we... we we have these times when we get hit with one right after the other. Um, but God is still there. And he's still watching over us. And uh, so we just need to continue to lift these up in prayer and do what we can uh, in those situations. Um, so what other prayer requests or praises or updates do you have? Continue to pray for Richard Alley. Okay. He just always can't treat me. Okay. Pray that Rose heals from her uh, knee operation. Okay. Okay, so remember Richard Alley and Ruth. What else? The Rocky family. Say it again? Dan Rocky's family. Yes. I think I had that. Yeah, I had that here. I just forgot. I got too many on my list. But Danny Rocky's family, definitely. Yeah. I'd like to just say that. Uh, I've just had my four-year anniversary on my kidney and liver transplant, and I'm still doing good, and thank God. Amen. Good. It's always good to hear that. Yep. we got to throw some praises in there, because otherwise we can, we can get discouraged, can't we? Because God's still doing stuff. We like him to do everything, but he's got reasons for stuff that I don't know about. And uh, so we just keep going forward. For the work that was done on the church that I missed out on. <laughs> we won't go there. <laughs> yeah, we had a we had a good work day yesterday. We had some teens show up, and I love the the energy and enthusiasm that teens can provide because I don't have that energy anymore. Um, but uh, yep, yeah, we got some things cleaned up and, and tore apart and more messed up. <laughs> William did the mess. We did the cleaning. You didn't clean up mess, I didn't clean up your mess. No. I left before that. <laughs> I figured you're going to make more. What else this morning? All goes well. Raymond Alley's supposed to be home the 1st of June. Okay. All right. Keep praying for Raymond then. Our prayer chorus is He is Lord. He is risen from the dead, and we have that hope that we too can go with him one day. And uh, so let's let's sing that and and uh, bring these requests and, and praises before him this morning. Mm -hmm. 
circumstances that are beyond our control are still in somebody's hands and that you can take care of them because Father we, we feel helpless at times we get discouraged easily we look at all the things that are happening in our world and around us and, and the people that we love and we, uh, we grieve, we mourn we, we question but Father we want to maintain that we still believe that you are God we still hold fast to the fact that you have made this universe and that you sustain us and that you provide for us. And that we can come to you with anything that's on our hearts and minds and we can give it to you. And we can learn from you. We can just rest in you. Father, there are many families that are hurting right now. They've lost loved ones and, and some of it doesn't make any sense. Father, I just pray that you continue to watch over these families and comfort them. We pray for uh, Danny Rodney's family. We think of Danny Davis. And pray for him, not only in his grief, but uh, the accident that he's had, that you would touch and heal him. Um, we pray for the Woodard family. We think of Betty and her family, as, um, and Marina and Tyler's family, as we just had these services for them. And uh, as we look towards this weekend and saying our final goodbyes and celebrating the life of the Lord. And we just pray that you be with Doris and Melanie and Daniel. And Father, there's others as well we know that they just need you to get them through this time. Help bear their grief and put your arms of comfort around them. And then, Father, we see others that are struggling and Physical needs almost seem overwhelming at times, so we just pray that you would give them strength and healing. And we think of Ruth today. We pray for Richard Alley. We pray for Raymond, and that he would be able to get well enough to come home. We pray for Kenton and this new diagnosis that has completely caught him and his family off guard. We just pray that you would give them encouragement and give him some relief, and most of all, we know that you can heal. So that is in your plan. We just pray that you would do that. Father, there are others that have unspoken requests. We ask that you would take and you would be with them. Give them the, the wisdom that they need. Father, we also praise you because of the things that you are doing. We praise you for Healings that go on for years. We praise you that um, we can look back on things and see how you cared for us and brought us through. And we praise you that we are here today and that we, we see things starting to open up in our, our state, in our country, in our world. And we just pray that that would be an encouragement. That as the days get warmer, as people get out, that there would be memories made and there would be reconnections just a lot of things happening that hasn't been. Father, for one of those things, we just pray that you would again instill in us the importance that we have to invite people to see you and what you're doing. That 
we would understand that the invitation must come and, and we must encourage people and we must share with what you've done because you are an amazing God. And so, Father, today as we open your word and look at some scripture and, and learn about you, just once again, show us how important it is that we pass this good news on to others. In your name we pray. That better? There we go. I can hear myself again. Everybody said, oh no. I'm sure there's going to be some oh no's in there. So as I mentioned, we are starting a new sermon series it's going to take us a few weeks to get through here. And I call it sitting at Jesus' feet. It's a good place to be, right? And whenever I hear that phrase, I'm reminded of two pictures in the Gospels. One of them being when the people brought the children, little children to Jesus. And it says that he took them in his arms and he blessed them. You know, that to me is one of the illustrations I love. You know, that they're just sitting there, you know, the, the, the children sitting around Jesus. The other one that always comes to mind is Mary. Remember the story of Mary and Martha? And Martha was trying to get the house in order and trying to cook the meals and trying to do everything and was all flustered because Mary wasn't helping. Where was Mary? She was sitting at Jesus' feet. She was listening to Jesus. She was just in the moment absorbing what was going on right around Jesus. And uh, those two pictures are kind of where I get the, the title from this from. <clears throat> Excuse me. But today as we start looking at this, and we're going we're gonna to look at the big word, the big church word is discipleship. All right? But what is discipleship? What is it to be discipled or to be a disciple of Christ? We're going to talk about four stages of growth in the next few weeks. And that's why I've got my little chair here. Isn't it cute? It actually folds up and everything. Look at that. I just wanted something that we can look at as we look at this, because we're going to look at this chair and three others over the course of the next few weeks and how it relates or how can we can visualize discipleship and growth and spiritual maturity. And so we're going to start today with one chair because we've got to start in one chair. Sitting at Jesus' feet, it's got to start somewhere, doesn't it? You know, we don't just all of a sudden wake up one day and go, oh, I know it all. Sometimes we think we do, but we usually don't. And so we're going to look at this first chair today, and it's simply, it's the chair of invitation. It's the chair of come and see. You know, come and see that the Lord is good. Come and see what God has done. Come and see. It's just, a, it's just an invitation to us. I think discipleship, we get a little bit too complicated at times, and so that's why I'm trying to break it down. And I think that one of the best ways to describe discipleship and this idea of growth is Paul's words in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. He says, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. That's all discipleship is. It is the following of Jesus Christ. And yes, we have other people that lead us. You know, as your pastor, I lead you. Hopefully, as we learn through this and stuff, you will lead others in that process. Because we all are called, it's not just pastors or Sunday school teachers or leaders that are called to go and make disciples. Jesus said all of us are to go and make disciples. So one of, we're going to find ourselves, by the end of this series, sitting in one of these four chairs. And I'm not going to tell you what all of them are yet. We're going to work our way up through them. But each of us are sitting in one of the chairs right now. 
You're sitting in a chair by your choice. What chair are you sitting in? The first chair is that chair of invitation, the chair of come and see. It's just, it's just simply that invitation. There's no commitment. There's no, there's no responsibility. There's no nothing there except just, just come and take a walk. That's all it is. Come sit with me and see what Jesus is doing. This is where we all start. We go from unbelieving to at least accepting the invitation of come and see. And we sit in that chair. Have you ever been invited somewhere that you just weren't sure whether you were going to like it or not? And somebody said, well, just come in. If you don't like it, you can leave again. Right? That, that's all this is. It's, it's the invitation to come. That first chair. John chapter 1, verses 43 to 51 is what we're going to read this morning. And you're going to see the invitation, not from Jesus himself, though he gave a lot of invitations the first few chapters of the Gospels as he called his disciples. You're going to actually see one of his disciples inviting somebody else. John chapter 1, verse 43 says, The next day, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Finding Philip, he said to him, follow me. So, okay, there is a little invitation from Jesus, but that's not what I'm focusing on. So he said to Philip, follow me. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethsaida. Philip found Nathanael, and he told him, We have found the one that Moses wrote about in the law, and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nazareth, can anything good come from there? Nathanael asked. Come and see, said Philip. There's the invitation. When Jesus saw Nathanael approaching, he said of him, Here truly is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. How do you know me? Nathanael asked. Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. Then Nathanael declared, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus said, you believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree. You will see greater things than that. He then added, very truly I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. So we've got this interplay here between Jesus, Philip, and Nathaniel. Jesus is still gathering disciples around him at that very beginning. And... Philip is so impressed, he's, he's so into this, he believes so much, he can't go, but he can't help but go and, and find Nathaniel and, and say, you've got to come and see this. And what is Nathaniel's initial reaction? Skepticism. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? I love how the Gospels portray it in just real humanity. Because how many times have we thought that? Well, can, can anybody from that family do good? Can anybody from that side of the tracks do good? Can anybody from that town do good? We've all had those thoughts. I know we have. And yet, there was something in Philip's invitation that caught Nathaniel's interest, and so he came along. And it was just an invitation. Just, just come and see. Come see for yourself. Experience it yourself. And then Jesus, of course, blew his mind. Well, I saw you under the fig tree. I don't know how that happened. That's one of those mysteries I think we've got to ask Jesus about when we get there. But Jesus said, that's, that's nothing. You're going to see even greater things. And, and Nathaniel did this complete switch. You know, you are the son of God. I do believe. Come and see is an open invitation. We start with this chair. We start somewhere that we don't believe. We start somewhere that we are not in tune with God. We start somewhere that we're lost or hurting. And there's an invitation. And Jesus calls for everyone. It's open. He extends his love and forgiveness to each person. There's no one left out. There's no one shunned. There's no one discriminated against. Jesus calls to every sinner, tax collector, prostitute, and every religious leader, Pharisee, teacher of the law, he calls to everyone. 
He says, come. Come and know me. Jesus looked at where people were and he loved them there. You ever notice that? When you really study the gospel, he looked at where they were and he loved them there. And then he called them to follow. He showed his love while they were still sinners. But then he called them out of that sin to follow him. Jesus never went into a place and said, well, I'm here now, you're going to need to do it my way. No, he simply just set the example and said, I'm going to do it this way, why don't you come along? That's the invitation. And I think too often we get that backwards and we say, well, if you look like us and you smell like us and you act like us, you can be part of us. And that's, that's not what Jesus is saying. He's saying you need to love them. And then influence them so that they become like me. Because we don't need more people that look like us and act like us. We need more people that look and act like Christ. It's an open invitation to everybody. An open invitation to leave sin behind, to leave the hurt of the world behind, to enter into a peace and joy and love and salvation through forgiveness. And it starts with that invitation of come and see. Just come take a look. There's no commitment. There's no, yep, you're locked into this for life. No, just come take a look. And then if you want a part of it, you can make that choice. There's no judgment at the start. Just come and see what God is doing. Come and see is an invitation to window shop. Anybody like going window shopping? Most of us, I think, go window shopping when we don't have enough money in our pocket. We still like to see what's out there. But what happens when you pass by a window that there's something that's on sale that you've been looking for that you really want? You tend to go in, don't you? Because the invitation's in the window. Look at what we've got. They broadcast it all over the place. It's in a sense what Philip was doing with Nathaniel. Come and see Let's go window shopping. I found something I think is really impressive and, and special, and, and it's what we've been looking for. You come and make your own decision. It's a call to an adventure. It's a call to a different way of life. And we need to have the wonder and excitement of what God is doing so that it entices others to come and see. Because come and see also shows us that little sliver of heaven. You ever realize that? God gives us these little pictures of heaven every day. And we've been talking in our prayer time about all the things that are wrong, and they are. There's a lot of things wrong in this world. There's a lot of things wrong in our town. There's a lot of things that are hurtful and that are discouraging. And we can focus on just them, or we can see what God is doing, because God is still doing some things. He's doing marvelous things. He's doing miraculous things. You know, for instance, I've been trying to give out some invitations to some kids. And we had two new teens in the youth group Friday night. And then they came Saturday and helped out the church. Now, they're not completely, you know, foreign to this church because they've been, they've grown up going to VBS and, and different things. But just to have them there was was fun to see them get involved and they wanted to be there. And it was just an invitation. Just come check it out. Come see what youth group's like. Because it's little slices of heaven like that that we have to latch onto and say, this is going to get me through whatever is ahead. God is still moving and working and answering prayers and we're seeing images of heaven every time that happens. I find it interesting how Jesus ends this conversation with Nathaniel. We have it recorded. It says here, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Now, a literal mind, that's got kind of a weird picture, isn't it? 
You know, you've got a person, the angels are running up and down. But this imagery that Jesus uses is straight from the Old Testament. He's referencing Genesis 28, 13, or 12. It is the story of Jacob. Remember the story of Jacob? Jacob ticked his brother off and was in fear for his life, and so he ran away. He had a reason to be feared, or to fear his brother, because Jacob had just tricked his brother out of his birthright and, and a few other things, the blessings of his father and all that stuff. And so now Jacob is traveling. He's going to go back to the land of his forefathers, and he's going to try to find a wife. Well, it's a long journey, and so in the process, at some point, he's got to sleep, and so he lays down at a certain point. And that night, he has this dream or this vision or whatever you want to call it, and he sees heaven opened and a stairway to the earth, and there are angels going up and down the stairs. Remember that? And in the morning, what he does is he takes the rock that he'd been using for a pillow. That must have been comfortable. <laughs> And he stands it up and he anoints it with oil and he says, this is the house of God. He named it Bethel, the house of God. This is the house of God. This is where God touches earth. This is where God lives. Jesus is using that same symbolism to talk about himself. You're going to see heaven opened and the angels going back and forth and I am the stairway. I am the connection between earth and heaven. I am the connection between you and God. That's what he's saying there. When Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, no one comes to the Father except through us, well, how are we supposed to get to heaven? It's through Jesus Christ. He becomes that, that spiritual stairway that, that road, that gate, we've used all those symbolisms, that, that door that opens up to heaven. And so when we connect with Christ, when we see him as he truly is and, and we believe him as the son of God, then we begin to see heaven here on earth because we've connected the two planets. Jesus has brought us a little heaven on earth, which we can be thankful for. So whenever we have those God moments, those miracles, those, those prayers answered, that perfect timing for a need, that, that note of encouragement that comes when we need it, or so many other little things, the, the, the fingerprints of God in our lives, we're touching heaven just a little bit. This is God's grace, his mercy to us. And it's only possible because Jesus has invited us to come and see what God has done. Come and see what God has done and what he is doing, because it's an active thing, too. You know, I, I think as human beings, we tend to say, you know, well, that happened in the past, but right now I can't see that happening. And we tend to, yeah, well, those things were good then, but I don't know if they can happen now. And yet God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He will do it. He can do it. He has the power that he hasn't changed. We need to believe. We see a lot of evil, a lot of sin, a lot of bad things every day. We live in a world that is broken and hurting. And there is no denying that. Sin has made a mess of things down here. But God has given us hope. He's given us healing. He's giving us forgiveness. He's giving us a way out of these things. If we just come and see. Come and see a different way of living. Come and see forgiveness. Come and see the love I have for you. Come and see the peace that I can give you. Come and see the future plans I have for you. All these things Jesus says in those words, come and see. The challenge this morning is, are you issuing those same words to others? Are you like Philip going into the world and saying, come and see, and bringing people to Christ? I marvel at how simple that was. Now, maybe there was more of a conversation that just wasn't recorded by John. I don't know. 
But I, I just marvel how simple that was. Philip went to him, and Nathaniel expressed some doubts. Philip just said, well, come and see, and they came to Christ. You know, God's got a wonderful way of taking our doubts and changing them into faith. If we come and let him. But that come and see, we have to make that choice. And that's where it boils down to. We have to make the choice ourselves to come. And we have to make the choice to invite others. And so really two challenges today. The first one is, are you sitting in that chair of invitation? Have you come to see what God is doing? And have you come with, with an open heart and mind to hear and to accept that God's got something better for you? And then the second challenge is, if you're already sitting in one of these chairs, if you already count yourself as a believer, a disciple of Christ, are you calling others to come and see? Because we need to. We need to. The only thing that can make this world any better is more God moments in it. The only way we get more God moments is if we have more people believing in God and praying and, and living in faith. So invite people to come and see. That's my challenge today. That's God's challenge. You know, he says that his word will not return void. So when we invite somebody and they come and they hear God, the seeds that are planted will burst into fruit. Isn't it good to know that we don't have the responsibility? We can't turn around and make somebody grow. We can't force them into decision. We just issue the invitation and they come and see. So where are you this morning? Have you come? Are you looking? If you're here, you're online, you've come. What do you believe? Have you made that decision to follow him now? Well, like Nathaniel, you say you are the son of God and follow him. And if you are following him, who can you invite? Next week would be a great week to bring somebody back. Invite them. Come with somebody else. As we're easing up restrictions, we're going to have more seats available in here. Why don't we fill them? As we do more things, Men's Fellowship, Ladies Tea is going to be starting uh, relatively soon. Why don't we fill those groups? Find somebody you can invite. That's, that's, that's the challenge. That's the big challenge. Find somebody you can invite and bring them with you. Let's pray this morning. Father, thank you that you have opened up an invitation for all of us. Thank you that you love us so much that you sent your son to teach and to die for us and to rise again and to challenge us and to bring us out of this world of sin and hurt. Father, I pray for anyone that is struggling with that belief right now. Um, I just pray that you would open their eyes in faith that they would receive Christ and his forgiveness Father, that they would become just another disciple in a long list of disciples we've had over the years. And then I pray, Father, that as we who do believe sit here in one of these chairs, that we are constantly asking, who else can I invite? Father, bring, a mind, bring to mind a name, a face right now that you are calling that we can add that our invitation to, Father, so that they can find eternal life and salvation and, and rest as well. And then, Father, give us the courage as we go out from here to invite them, to, to say, come and see. Come and see what God is doing. You're a great God, and we love you today. We thank you for all that you are doing. In your name we pray.